And good evening to you. It's Thursday the 27th of July 2017, 9 o'clock at night. Welcome to a nighttime show. Yes, Chris Whitten from United Kingdom Talk with you for, for a little bit of a chat this evening. Hope you're well. It's very funny in the papers how they, um, or in the news in general, how one minute we're told one thing and the next minute we're told another. Now, of course, you remember the eggs years ago that or uh, was it uh, m m what's the name curry wasn't it what's her name oh edwina curry <clears throat> told us that all eggs were now probably infected with some sort of bacteria and then we've had we have uh, eat yogurt it's good for you don't eat it it's bad for you and all this well the latest thing is on antibiotics antibiotics all doctors since I can remember when I was a little boy, um, have told us to finish the course of antibiotics. I've never heard any different. So this morning, in the news, this is the this is Daily Mail. Uh, it says doctors should stop telling people. Oh, where's my glasses? There we go. Uh, doctors should stop telling people to complete their course of antibiotics. Say experts, they fear it is continuing with a force. Uh, they fear continuing with a course of treatment after a patient feels better could increase antibiotic resistance, where superbugs evolve that are immune to drugs. And the story goes on there. Um, but we've always been told, haven't we? Just because we feel better <clears throat> doesn't mean those antibiotics are complete, completely out of our system, does it? Indeed, I have always, always finished the entire box of pills or something like that. We can't, we can't be chucking anything away, dear. Certainly not if it's been given to me for nothing. <laughs> I've got one of Well, it's not exactly nothing. I've got... Um, one of those prepay prescription cards you can buy, you know? For, so for one fee, I think it's about £105 a year or something like that. You buy this card from the NHS, it lasts a year, and you have a, in, as many prescriptions as you need. I mean, I'm down there every week trying to get me one it's worth. Oh, can I have this? Can I have that? She's fed up seeing me. <clears throat> when I approach the doctor's surgery now, I see she looks, and quickly the shutter comes down just as I get there. Funny that. Funny that, or, or they have tried, I've tried something new this week for a repeat prescription. I've gone online and tried to order it from there. So tomorrow, that was on Monday, actually. I did that on Monday. So I'll go down to the chemist tomorrow to see if it's there or not. If it's not, I shall be most upset. And I said, well, I ordered it online. They set up all these things online, don't they? <clears throat> Most of the time, we don't know how to use the damn things. So it's really interesting about the antibiotics. Um, personally... I'll stick with what I know, and I'll keep taking them until the blooming thing's finished. What do you think about that? Huh? Do you think, I mean, you know, just because you feel better doesn't mean the infestation, the, um, the bacteria has left your body, does it? No, it doesn't. Doesn't. And certainly if it's a virus, it doesn't help anyone. I did see one of the papers this morning, actually. Um, or, or, or it might have been... I think it was on Sky News this morning. It was on Sky News. And they mentioned antibiotics and HIV. Now, HIV is a virus. And I'm thinking, why did you say antibiotics and HIV together? Because that doesn't cure that or affect that in any way at all. Because that's a virus. Antibiotics are bacteria. Or have I got that wrong? I'm sure I'm right with that one. Doesn't affect viruses. All these people, oh, you go to the doctors, don't you? I chew, I chew. I mean, you go in there with a little cut. On, well, you shouldn't go in there with a cut on your finger, but you, you get the general idea. You go in there with a cut on your finger. You come out with bloody, uh, I don't know, typhoid or something like that. Or someone's breathed in your face. I chew. <clears throat> Is that how you get typhoid? I'm not quite sure. Don't go in adapters and don't ever, ever touch those magazines in there. My God, they're alive. I was sitting there once, I kid you not, sitting there patiently waiting for my name to appear on the, um, on the television screen. Because <clears throat> they've got this big television screens in most doctors now. And it's showing, I don't know, medical information and the weather comes up and bits of news come up. And then it goes, Ooh! Christopher Reardon. Please report to Doctor Room 2. <laughs> Do you get that in your doctors? I mean, what if you want to be incognito in there? You don't want anyone to know they're in there. God knows, I hope they don't put, start put that in the SDT clinics, dear. Oh, my word. Can you just imagine it? You're sitting there 
in one of those clinics waiting to see something because you've been a bit naughty somewhere and you're like that and suddenly your name is blurted across the screen and over some speakers. <laughs> awful, awful. So that's the thing on the old antibiotics. I don't, I don't think half the time they know what the hell they're talking about most of the time, do they? Huh? Let's say hello to some early adopters this morning. Greetings. Oh, this, oh tonight, boys, boys and girls. Good morning to Rod Brown. You get the first message prize tonight. Congratulations. Well, it was actually no prize, but you get the first mention. That's always an achievement, isn't it? Perhaps I should give a certificate. A certificate and a signed autographed photo to the person who sends the first message, which would have been today you, Rod. Welcome, Rod. Hello to the lovely Elaine. She's got a little um, experience of hospitals at your moment. Carry on, Elaine. You're doing very well, dear. Elaine is with us in uh, the beautiful country of Israel. Greetings, Elaine. Uh, S.O.S. Gregorian. Now, who are you, dear? S.O.S. Gregorian. Hi to you as well. I don't recognise your little face on there. No. Let us know who you are. Uh, Diane's there. Morning, Diane. Or evening, Diane. Sorry, I keep saying good morning. I'm used to doing this in the morning. James Clark says, are you not working tonight? Part-timer. No, James. I have two nights of a week. Thank you very much now. <clears throat> we can't continue working every single night forever, love. Carl, oh, there are more things to do. For example, come and chat to Lou. Jack coming, coming on here and chatting to you. Look how I've spread so much happiness into the end of your day when you've had such a pathetic, lonely, boring life today, haven't you? And I've come on and spread some sparkle into your life, James. How lucky are you? For, for nothing as well. This programme should be a subscription service. I'm sure it really should. Perhaps I could set up my own channel on Freesat or, or Sky. Sky, yes. Can you just imagine that? Little leaflet coming in your door. Which package would you like? Do you want the family-friendly package, including Sky One, Sky Movies, Sky Football, Sky Rugby, and the Chris Reardon channel? I like the sound of that very much. Who's the boss at Sky? Is it that Rupert bloke? <clears throat> I love to pop round there when he's not with his extremely young wife. Isn't it marvellous what you, what you can get when you get a bit of money, love? Look at her! Beautiful! Married to that! Do me a favour. See, there is hope for some of us. Maybe if I sold a house or two, <laughs> <laughs> Might be lucky there. Uh, greetings to Craig. Hello, Craig. Who says, can you say hello to Kevin and Craig at the top of the show? Well, good morning. Top of the show to Gavin and Craig. I don't look at the messages as soon as I start, Gavin and Craig. Otherwise, we never get anywhere. It becomes a bit of a, oh, hello. Hello, you. Oh, hello, you. Oh, hello, you. Hello. It becomes a bit periscopish, if you don't mind me saying so, lovey. Periscopish. And we're better than that. We're better. Good morning, boys. Good evening, boys. Hello to Wendy, who's having a cup of tea as we speak. She's she's pleased that she's able to join us live. I shall be seeing Wendy on Saturday. We've got a very, very special night on Saturday. Oh, yes, it's a charity karaoke night. Do you want to come? Now, are you anywhere? It's worth taking a bus. It's worth taking a bus or a train. Look at this. Here it is. There's our karaoke night that we're doing this coming Saturday, boys and girls in support of the Barry Mandelow Music Project, Cancer Research and the Dogs Trust. Oh, 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 oh! Oh, 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 oh! Oh, 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 oh! Oh! Wow, wow, wow! I do hope there won't be any dogs there. I should be very upset as people start bringing out those great big Rottweilers and Bulldogs and Alsatian dogs attacking me while I'm trying to do my job. Anyway, it's this coming Saturday, 8 o'clock, at the Fox and Flowerpot Pub at the Goldsworth Park Centre, Woking in Surrey. Now, this pub is literally in the Waitrose Car Park in Woking, if you can't find it. <clears throat> go into Waitrose Car Park, go right over into the corner, and it's there. All right? GU21 3LG, for those of you with satellite navigation equipment, we like sat-navs. I'd be completely lost without mine. Absolutely. I'm useless at finding my way to a, from A to B. Absolutely useless. Are you like that? My dad wasn't like that. <clears throat> He'd have a great sense of direction. If we were driving, because of course there were no sat-navs in the 1960s or 70s or 80s or 90s, was there? If he drove somewhere, he would have several different routes worked out in his head on the, the method to go to wherever we were going, usually the seaside or something like that. 
wouldn't have to read the map again. He'd, he'd sit there. I remember him now. He'd sit there at our house in Roehampton. He'd have a map out. And he'd be studying this map. Wouldn't write anything down. He'd be looking at this map. Okay, right. All right, let's go then. And we'd just go. He wouldn't even take the map with him. <clears throat> he just knew instinctively where to go. Me, no chance whatsoever. I went on a short trip to the Isle of Wight once and I ended up in Australia. That's how bad it's got. It was a damn long walk. My feet were very sore after that. <laughs> Hello to the lovely Philip Ashcroft who joins us tonight. Greetings, Philip. Now, why is that? Gone off. One minute. Oh, maybe it's not as hot in here as I thought. Hang on a minute. Why is my air thing? Why isn't that on? Mode. Hang on a minute. I've got the I've got the wrong thing on here. Hang on that no, that one, that one. That one, that one. That one, that's it. Oh, I must be down to temperature. Hang on a minute. Oh, it's not that hot anyway, is it? I just feel hot tonight. I feel hot. Probably because I had um uh chili earlier. I had chili. Oh, talking of chili. Here's an easy meal for you boys and girls. And if you're on Slimming World, an excellent meal. Look at this, what I've discovered in Waitrose, where I went earlier this morning. Heinz Creations. This program is sponsored now by Heinz Creations. Uh, veg chili beans. Very nice indeed, these are. I had one the other night just before I went to bed. And you have that on a jacket potato with no butter. Only two sins, that. Two sins. If you're on Slim and World, if you're not on Slim and World, have two or three cans. This is delicious, I tell you. Heinz know how to do their stuff, so I've got that nicely displayed. On my, I hope this programme tonight needs to be sponsored by Heinz, doesn't it? Yes. Um, uh, Gavin Matthews is there tonight. Greetings, Gavin. Tony Power. Hello, Tony. Terry H is there. Hello, Terry. Oh, we're all there today, aren't we? Look, Ross says, just chucking it down here in... Oh, yes. Uh, the rain in uh, Norfolk, is it chucking it down there? It just started here, funnily enough. I went outside because I put the cat outside for a while. I put the cat outside in the garden, the back garden, as much as possible. Now, she she seems to be happier in the garden than she is in her little area in the kitchen. She does seem to be a lot happier there. Maybe she thinks she's in the jungle. I like the noises in jungle, didn't you? It must be a bit scary. Do you think in a jungle? A noise. Oh, 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 Noises in the jungle. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. I think she thinks she's out in the jungle, although it's very strange because I do try and keep my grass cut nicely. Hmm. So it has been chucking it down here. I popped downstairs just before I started to water the hanging baskets out the front and literally it started raining, so I fetched the cat back in again. We can't have her getting cold out there, dear. Greetings to the lovely Heidi, who joins us uh, from Islington, I think, aren't you, Heidi? Greetings, Heidi. Uh, Martin Daly. Greetings, Martin. Ross says, I think they should ditch the LBC studio and put United Kingdom Talk instead at the Global Building and then you can go straight to the gigs after your show. Oh, it would be very useful, wouldn't it? <clears throat> but you know I'm not LBC material, dear. I'm not LBC material. Come on, how can I be LBC? Who wants some old puff on early in the morning, mouthing off? Oh, hang on a minute. That's, um... No, that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely old Steve Allen. We love him. Uh, Ross says, I'm the driver when we go out. And because I drive lots around Norfolk and I know all the wee stops back, uh, the wee-wee stops. <laughs> oh, no! Guess what I saw on the motorway last night? <laughs> this is true. On the motorway last night, I'm driving along, and it got to the end of the M4, uh, where it goes into London. Now, at that point, we all slow down to a crawl, because it goes from three lanes to two lanes. And there, there was a woman on the other, with her hazard lights on, on the other side of the barrier, crouched down having a poo in full view of everyone. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you park your car sort of slight at angle with the door open there and you'd go on the other side of the door, wouldn't you? So that no one could see you. How awful and ghastly some people are. Dear, dear me. I mean, if you're a child being held over a gutter somewhere, then fair enough. But please, adults, what are you doing? Mind you, when you've got to go, you've got to go. 
And that's all there is to it, isn't it? There's a phone line open if you want to call in at some point. It's 020 8144 3477. All right, 020 8144 3477. If you fancy a little bit of a chat uh, with us on the show tonight, I've had a nice day actually. Uh, did the quiz last night. That was okay, you know, about four teams, only four teams in there last night. <clears throat> Um, I don't know why that quiz has gone a bit quiet. It, it's it's one of those things. It does happen sometimes, you know. Um, things start going quiet and you can't put your finger on it. What, what are we doing differently? When you have such a long time when it's like packed, packed, packed and suddenly it goes quiet. And it's been a bit quiet really, to be honest, since Easter. No, since before Easter. So that's a long time. I mean, <clears throat> on the other hand... Without the quiz, I think there would have been two people in there last night. We had um, four teams of four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. About eighteen people playing the quiz altogether, which I suppose is a fair amount, isn't it? Yeah, mind you, if everyone, how much do you spend on a night out, sort of during the week? Would it be ten quid? How much would you, if you was in a pub during the week, or maybe you do go into a pub during the week, how much do you spend in a night? There's a question for you. Could you answer me uh, either on a on a little message there or perhaps you want to call in 0208144377. I've got Skype as well, by the way. Uh, my Skype in name is United Kingdom Talk. Uh, Skype name United Kingdom Talk or phone in 0208144377 or just put your message there. Uh, James says £20 if it's a quiet one. So if 18 people were paying £20 each, spent £20 each, oh, I suppose it is worth it, isn't it? That brings in 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 83, 20, 40, 60. 360 quid. Okay. That would buy four drinks, 20 quid, would it? So it's about 360 quid. I suppose it is worth them putting it on, isn't it? <clears throat> when you think about it. Because the top prize there is a £30 bar tab. Now, a £30 bar tab doesn't really cost the pub 30 quid. Probably their biggest expense is me. But actually, I don't charge... Uh, I, I, I don't mind telling you what I get for on a Wednesday night. They pay me £100 to do that. £100 to do that. And let me tell you the, the, the job for that £100, what I do for that £100. Uh, I get the quiz together. I buy the quiz in from someone. OK, I buy the quiz in uh, from one of several companies, actually. Uh, then I print it off. I send them the picture around, which they print off. Uh, I get the little answer sheets together and I leave my house around about um, quarter to six on a Wednesday. I drive there. Do the quiz, do the chat in between, uh, drive home, and I get back here round about midnight on a on a, 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 a on on quiz night. So it's six till midnight. So I, I think, do you think that hundred pounds? That's reasonable, isn't it? Very reasonable. I actually, started off there at seventy five, and it's gone up. I ask once for a rise, and then they put it up themselves. So hundred hundred, I don't know, hundred and ten pound to take in three hundred and sixty. I don't suppose that's too bad at all, is it? I don't know. Uh, Tony's on the line. Hello, Tony. How are you? Uh, how are you doing, Chris? You all right? All right. Thank you very much, Tony. How much do you spend on a night out? On a night out, I don't spend anything. Oh, you're a good... You're yeah. old school. You're like me. Ah! I, don't, I, I don't drink for a start. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teetotaler, so... I said, you, <laughs> you still drive that bike, don't you? I still drive the bike. So, obviously, anyway, even if I was a drinker, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be... Yes. I, I, I wouldn't be... Uh, <laughs> obviously... Yeah. Drinking and driving, you know. Oh yes, but, yes. Oh, you can't drink. Yeah, yeah, you can't you do that. Well, that that would be sort of me on a night out, really. I'd, I'd probably buy one glass of. See, I'd, I don't drink at all, really, not at all. Um, uh, Coca Cola, lemonade, all that. I find that I think, oh well, I'm just filling up myself with sugar, so I don't like well, to drink yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, you've watch, water. You've got to watch that Coca Cola, and actually, uh, you've got to watch Diet Coke as well. That's another one. Is that bad as well, is it? Well, you think about the saccharine in uh, in oh, is coke, that what it is, yeah. It? And saccharine contains a certain amount of sugar, doesn't it? Is that chemical saccharine? Uh, it's, it? it's, it's it's chemical, but it's it's, it's probably it's probably just um, it's got nearly as much effect as sugar, actually. Okay, I, I think there's. I've seen some people talk sometimes about the the the, the diet coke and all that. It's probably yeah. worse for you. Uh, the, the substitute for the sugar isn't good. I've heard that yeah, before. It's, it's you know. a form of sac uh, your saccharine, I think, to put yes. in there, or some form of uh, 
you know, something like that, I think that, yes. that is actually not all that good for you anyway. Yeah. So. Now, I've just, just spotted a message you've put on there. You can read it out yourself if you want to. Uh, you're, well, you're doing or, or, or some... I mean, what about uh, <clears throat> our label? It's going to be bringing out uh, Power World. It's going to be bringing out... Um, just, um, just tell good... people. Just tell people what you do first, Tony. Well, basically, I've got my own music label, and 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 uh, I, I, I've got a number of artists that I work with and write for, <clears throat> and all that. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> and it could be any anybody from the Three Degrees right through to the Sonyas, and and uh, it's mainly old school artists that I've been writing for over the years, you know. So, but um, but uh, this year I wanted to be a bit different and just sort of bring out a few. Uh, your tracks to raise uh, some um, awareness of certain things like cancer and things like that. So, so I've teamed up with um, a group called Cancer Is a Drag. I, I think you've probably heard of them. I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're going to we're going to release a Christmas single this year. It, it's actually a brand new track. Who's who's singing and, that? Oh, th- is this why you've rung were rung up? You want me to sing it for you? Oh, I'm well, so. Well, there ha- you are, Chris. Oh. You know, uh, <laughs> You're asking me in a roundabout way to sing your song, there aren't you? you? Go. You know, you you picked up, haven't you? Of course, <laughs> I. Well, I wish I'd picked up. Last time I picked up was about <laughs> ten years ago, love. Jeez. Uh, my, oh yeah, no. I think people it. walk around with their <laughs> eyes closed. They can't see me coming sometimes. Mind you, since I lost all this weight, it's very difficult to spot me in the street now. You, you know, know. I, I haven't actually seen you for. I haven't seen you in the flesh for a while now. No, I know. So, you you need to come down to the um to the central station because I left the two brewers some weeks ago now. Uh, they were they. I, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they wanted to try going till three o'clock, and. I thought, I, I thought, no, I do not want to work until three o'clock, so that was that, really. Mm. And don't know if it worked or not. They might have gone back to two now, but it doesn't matter. I, 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 I've gone from there now, so that's good. I don't get out much myself now because I spend a lot of time writing, you know. I'm always writing bloody songs and, yeah. and getting new stuff done. And I'm putting a new album together as well, so um, uh, that's why you probably see me on here quite a lot, actually. So, oh, you're um, always on there promoting I, your stuff. Of course I see it, yes. So, so I tend to see you on there, and I see, and I said, "What have a chat with Chris?" Lovely. And, uh, who, who ha, ha, do you know who the singers are going to be yet, or is going to be, or one or for, group? Uh, for what? For the album? Uh, for the cancer is a drag thing. Cancer. Well, you know, um, I, I was told not to say anything about it at the moment because they want to keep it a bit of a, a, <sighs> a thing between them. So I don't know why, but they, but um, obviously they want to uh, be sure who the singers are going to be. But there's going to be quite well-known singers on the. You're certainly on the gay scene anyway, you know. Right, and okay. it, it's a bit of a group thing. It's, it, you know, it's going to be a group song. Yeah. And, uh, and the people that will be taking part, you will have heard of. And, and, uh, would, and it be a, if, would it be like a little bit like the Band Aid thing? Or it would we be are like the that. world. And, you know, uh, when, when it, it, it'd be a traditional old style Christmas song. Oh, you know? a Christmas carol, perhaps. Ding Love dong, Christmas. merrily on high. Something like that, yeah. lovey. <laughs> hey? Hot the hell all day. You need Ali, Ali Jones in it, dear. I'm walking <laughs> on the air. Must be blooming careful, oh careful, careful God, to be there. Yeah. He, he still sings that song, doesn't he? Today. Oh, he's, a, he's on songs of praise. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, she's put on a bit of weight, that one, dear, isn't he? Come oh, yeah, my she's word. Yeah, she's all over the place. Come, you couldn't she's, see. Them. He was she's standing. Way to the handicap, isn't she? He was standing doing a little introduction in front of some church the other week. Well, you couldn't see the church from behind him, dear. <laughs> Car, it was like an eclipse going on there, my love. An eclipse. <laughs> totally eclipse, yeah. Actually, talk about that. I went to see the Energize event the other day. Energize? What's that? Uh, 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 you know, they had their, um, their uh, 24th anniversary party. And, and what is Energize? Uh, Energize Records. You know, That's a record Energize label, Records, is it? No? That's a record label, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's right. a record label. Oh, they have all, all the people like Nicky French and, yeah. and and all that, and they had a rather good, good, uh, good show down at the Two Brewers the other day. It, it was a uh, kind of a celebration of twenty four years. Oh, label, lovely! Basically. That was a good night, was it? Yeah, well, it was a hell of a big night. They had quite a lot of people turned up. Okay, it was, uh, probably over yeah, a couple of hundred people. Lovely! That's well, a good night. Well, it? Yeah. Actually, I was quite surprised so many people came along. Yeah. Who was your DJ for that? Now, uh, Adam, Adam, you know... Uh, oh, Adam, Demon, Demon was doing the back room, was he? Excellent, excellent. He, he was there, and, 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 and what's his name was next door. I think they had... Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the other guy. Young Li- Liam, that'd be Liam. 
it, it might have been Reem. Yes, he took over from me on Thursdays. Yeah, yeah. Wait, he's wait, doing quite, quite well, isn't he? It, it, it yeah. was quite a, quite a fun evening, actually. Yeah, good, yeah. good. So, but there you go. And you were on about the subject of antibiotics a while ago. Yes, you I mean, the they're, they're telling us now not, not to take the whole course, aren't they? One minute they tell us one thing, next minute it's something else. You never know where you're standing with all these stories. What do you reckon? I'm not so sure <laughs> about these antibiotics. Um, Any time I ever get prescribed them, I sort of take them as long as I feel myself that they, are, they have worked and, and, uh, and they have had an effect and, and, and then I stop taking them and then they, they, I'm usually okay but, but right. everybody's different I think, you know, everybody's uh, yeah. everybody's systems are probably different some people need to take the whole course I think and, and, yeah, cause, and, uh, cause I, I remember I've been told so many times by doctors if you don't take, you know, so you take them and then you feel better and then we, I've always continued to take them because that's what the doctor said. Because the doctor says you may feel better, then you stop taking them, and it will come back and hit you harder. I've been told that so many times, so I always finish the whole box. Well, that's probably what mm. they're told themselves. You know, mm. you know, they're probably told in medical schools. You know, they're you know, they're all, you know, some doctors are robots, really. You know, they're told they're told something, and then they tell everybody else it. You know, um. I, I, I'm not so sure. I think everybody's different. Everybody, you know, it works differently for everybody. Sometimes when you stop taking um, uh, an antibiotic like that, they you know they try you out on something else anyway. So, yes. So, so, uh, so effectively, you've you've stopped halfway through anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I think everybody's different with, with antibiotics. Isn't That's it, really? interesting. I, I, you know, you you take them till you feel better, then you stop. Then do you? Well, yeah, right. I, um, I stop, but but I would have to be feeling better, you know, because yeah. otherwise I wouldn't <clears> stop taking them. If <throat> if I feel that they've worked to a degree, you know, right. and um, and I normally find that when I when when I stop taking them, I'm I'm fine. Right. Uh, okay. okay. Like I say, it's, it's probably different. I'm sure other people have got different opinions <clears> about it as to whether that it works that way for them. But I don't know. Doctors, as you say, do recommend you take the whole. Yes, whole they do. Well, well they they always have done. This is a new thing but in the paper. Know. Yeah, I don't. I don't really like taking any antibiotics or that much oh, anyway. I, I don't um, like taking pills at all. infections anyway, I tend to use natural, uh, your know, ways to deal with it, like like, like gargling salt or or oh, uh, you? if you've got right. a sore throat or stuff like that. You know, more natural yeah. kind yeah, of I'm substances to try I'm and you know, deal with it. And did you ever do that like Holland Barrett thing? You know, the uh, what's, what's it called? That? Homeopathy. Do you have alternative pills and all that? Have you ever done anything like that? No, I, I, don't, I, I don't do all that stuff at all, no. Um, no, I, I, just try to, I just try not to... I try to avoid uh, your tablets of after. But, uh, but I am on the, on the same one as you're on. I think I'm, I'm on a meprazole. What's that for? Uh, you're on that, aren't you? You're on, you're on, on, on the one for, for reflux and stuff, aren't you? Oh, no, no, la, 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 la prots, I don't know what it is, but I don't, have it, all, I don't, I don't have it all the time, Tony. I don't okay, have it all the time. No, no, not at all, uh, because it, it's rare that it happens now, but when it, if it does, then I'll have one. Funnily enough, I've had one tonight, because I've been feeling a little bit acidy tonight, you know, a little bit coming. So I had one just before I came up, and it's completely stopped now, completely yeah, stopped. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <coughs> uh, the ren the Rene really and all that is not... to me, really, you know, um, um, uh, Omeprazole is quite similar to that. Right. Uh, you know, they're two very, very similar tablets, actually. Yes. But, um, I, I take them now as and when I need them, just a bit like you, rather than, um, than you know, than sort of take them as prescribed, yeah. take one a day. Some people take, you say you should have them before breakfast. Some, some people say, uh, or, or sorry, before a meal, some say after. But, but uh, do you know, I don't think it, you know, it makes a blind bit of difference. You know, you just take one when you feel you have to have one, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, d I, don't, I don't think you should keep just taking pills all the time, unless there's something wrong. Because I think it all has a side effect somewhere, you know. Well, it, it does well if you read the inside. label on on um, uh, on uh, omeprazole, for instance, and and if you read all the side um, all the side effects. Oh no, you don't want to read. Uh, you don't yeah. want to read that. You don't well, want to read. Actually, <laughs> actually you <laughs> speak about <laughs> antibiotics. Uh, you know, <clears throat> now there was you know, there was something on TV the other day about uh, about omeprazole actually, but uh, it, 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 it's actually a very safe. Uh, medication yes. to take anyway. But when you, uh, if you read those side effects of everything you take, you'd never take another pill again. Indeed, I tell you that yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, have and, a nice. Uh, uh, you know, it's such nonsense. Oh yes, it, honestly. Awful. Well, have a nice yeah. evening, Tony. Thank you very much for calling in, sir. Ple 
Pleasure talking. Really uh, and is. don't forget to look in on the single when it comes out. When, Please when send it over and I'll be happy to play it for you, dear. I will do. I'm sure it'll turn out well anyway. Uh, just... Could you imagine being you're trapped in a studio with eight drag queens? Well, you, you know, just, uh, send, just send over the track to me and I'll <laughs> sing it for you. You won't have any of that trouble then. No charge. No charge at all. Just, just throw the handbags in and let them get on with it. You know. <laughs> Good night, Tony. Cheerio now. <laughs> OK, yeah. have you have fun. Bye-bye, bye, sir. Later. There we are, Tony from uh, from uh, Power World Music. You're looking like he's got his own Facebook uh, page there. Power World Music tells you all about him, OK, with the Christmas single coming up. Uh, hello to Ray Reynolds, who joins us tonight. Greetings, Ray. Jamie Clark says, I was at the services late last night uh, after work and some woman was hit in the back of her car with a hammer. <laughs> We thought nothing of it. Is it like banging the top? You know, you, you remember, it doesn't happen anymore, but you remember the old televisions with valves in them? And sometimes they wouldn't work and you just bang the top and they would suddenly burst into life. I wish people were a little bit more like that. Anyway, Jamie says she was hitting her car with a hammer. We thought nothing of it. I drove past and she'd beaten it up completely. The rear bumper has been caved in. She had must have been on some funny drugs. Why would you start hitting your car with a hammer? <laughs> Mind you, when I had my car fixed, <clears throat> I had a little bit of a dent in it, which I'd done myself, actually, uh, when I was going into the garage. I had a, a box in the garage. didn't have anything in it. But uh, I must have caught the side of the car and put a bit of a dent in. I took it up to my nephew, uh, who fixed it. He fixed his bodywork. He's got his own little unit up there in uh, Lincolnshire. And he fixed the bodywork for me and did the painting and all that. Um, and uh, but But to fix it... They have to make the dent worse first. And she starts banging the side of my car for hours. What are you doing, Jimmy? He said, I've got it. It has to be worse before it can get better. I don't know why that is, but it's a perfect fix. You'd never know uh, anything had gone wrong. Uh, sort of, I'd had a, a scrape or anything on the car there. Hello to Lee Gasson. Uh, Central Station empty without you here. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Lee. Is it really? Well, why don't you... You could put my show on the screen there. I'm sure that would be of great interest. Downstairs as well. Feel free to put us on the air downstairs in there as well, OK? I'm sure the fellas would love to be watching that while they're getting up to their other bits and pieces. Uh, Colin Morris says, please not Christmas cows yet. Don't worry, Colin. This is not the Harrods food... Uh, Harrods Christmas department, which will be opening in just a few weeks' time. Don't they have a bit of a competition between Harrods and uh, Selfridges? To see who can open their Christmas, <laughs> their Christmas departments first. Oh, it's ghastly, isn't it? Can you imagine buying Christmas stuff in August? Why would you do that even? Huh? And then Sainsbury's and Tesco's follow suit around the end of September now, don't they? Oh, it's awful having Christmas so early. It really is. Um, uh, hello to Pazaribo. Pazaribo. Greetings, Pazaribo. How are you tonight? Nice to see you joining us today. And thank you, Lee. Uh, La Lanzo Prazo. Lanzo Prazo, I think it's something like that. I'm not quite sure exactly what it's called. Uh, hello to Norma, who joins us from the USA. Hello, Norma. One of our Manalo girls, I think you are, aren't you? We're doing our charity on them on Saturday. I don't know if you were with us at the beginning of the show there. If you ever miss any of the show, you want to go back, that's fine. It stays up there as a recording later on, OK? Uh, Emily says, can I call you? Of course you can, Emily. Call in now if you want to. There's a line open. 020-8144-3477, OK? 020-8144-3477. Um, Jerry's there as well. Greetings, Jerry. I hope you're well tonight. That number, incidentally, that number is a local London number, OK? It's not premium rate or anything like that. It's a London number. Right, so just like calling your friend in London. That's that number up there now, 20 8144 Just a minute, let me pick that up. Um, all right, so call in there. Let's have a look here. What, can't, Heidi says, what about me? What about you, Heidi? What do you mean, what about me? What about you? Of course it works. The number does work, dear. I mean, he just called in on that number. Are you Are you dialing the right number? What do you get when you call it then? Let me try it. On my mobile phone. What was that? I'm sure I saw something fly across here then. It's probably one of those dragonflies in it. Oh, I hate insects, don't you? It does. Hang on, let's try it. I think you're ringing the wrong number, darling. 02081443477. Let's have a look. That should come up. You can't... Oh, yeah, you might be able to see it, actually. If you have a look there. Can you see that come up there? There it is there. There it is there. It's come up there. That's working fine, darling. It's your phone. It's not us, it's you. 
It's not me, it's you. How many times have you heard that one? It's not them, it's me. It's like when you get... Oh, where are you? Oh, you're over there, aren't you? Just a minute, where are you? Come back here, come back here, that's fine. It's like, you know when you get dumped by someone? Oh, it's not me, it's you, it's them, it's not you, it's me. They always say that, don't they? It's not really me, it's you. Hello, Emily, is that you, dear? No, dear, it's Heidi. Oh, hello, Heidi. All right, darling. How's you? I'm um, all right, thank you. Uh, Emily's trying to call in now, or she missed the boat. Oh, Emily, you'll you have to call in after Heidi if you want to, darling, all right? I'm very oh, well, right. Heidi. What are you calling in about tonight, her, my darling? I'll let, her, I'll let her call first, and I'll call after. Oh, no, no. No, she's gone. <laughs> And they've all gone. Oh, what hope is there? Emily, you can call in now. That should work now, darling. Give us a... <laughs> Give us a try now. 208 I'm having to look after my mate's cats at the moment. He's on holiday in uh, Cyprus. I think he said it was 30, 38 or 39 degrees there today. Oh, it's too hot, isn't it? Oh, it's too hot. He was running around in this little beach buggy. They've hired a beach buggy. This thing bounces all over the place. You can call now, Emily. There's a there's a, a line free now. Have you ever been in one of those beach buggies or something like that? He's bouncing around. He's got his brother in the back there and um, his brother's little boy called, uh, what do they call him? DJ. I think DJ is the name there. So that's nice. Um, so uh, this morning I went swimming. I went up to feed Ronnie's cat, of course, and I've cut myself. Look at that. Can you see that? Look at that. On one of the blooming tin cans. I remember a story once years ago about when you do, you try and do good, you end up damaged. And I have ended up damaged today. Look at that. Look at that cat there. It's like a paper cut, but on a can. It's an offer. Blood everywhere. Could I find the plasters? No. He's got everything on the lock and key in that place. He don't live too far from me up the road, but he's got four cats. And they're lovely cats. They're so friendly, all of them. There's V, there's Louis, there's Ralph, and there's Lauren. Four, so it's one little girl and three male cats. Now, Ralph is a big cat. That is a big cat. Now, what is he? He's like, I can't remember what sort of cat he is. He's like grey. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lee. Yes, I've got enough metros at the moment. I popped up. I was going to come to that in a minute. I did manage to get to the train station. I've picked up a load more metros. Uh, if you're new to the show, you won't know. I've got a very elderly cat myself. She's 18. And she is completely incontinent and a little bit doolally in the head now. She likes to spend a lot of time walking around in a circle. Sometimes she goes so fast, she falls over. Bless her heart. But anyway... Um, She's completely incontinent. See, she seems to go while she's asleep and she wakes up in all this way. So I've got a, a, an area of the kitchen dedicated to her, which is kind of, you know, it's not, it's, I mean, it's not, not a brick wall there, but I've kind of sealed it off from the rest of the kitchen. And that's where she is most of the time, unless she's in the garden. She seems pretty happy to be there. Uh, just walks around in circles all the time, bless her up. But she doesn't seem to be in any pain. If she was in any pain or discomfort... <coughs> then, you know, that's a different thing altogether. But I don't think physically, apart from her head being a little bit doolally... I mean, who isn't? You know, let's be honest, who isn't doolally? Anyway, back to my mate's cats. I can't remember what sort of cat it is, but it's grey and it's got a black tail and it's the most beautiful cat and deep, uh, bright blue eyes it's got. Its name is Ralph. Big cat. You wouldn't want to have a row with it. I said this the other night. Now, to me, it's never, never, ever... Um, being aggressive towards me. Never, never. And I, I remember it as a little cat, a tiny little thing in your, in the palm of your hand, a little kitten it was. Beautiful thing, so friendly. Um, uh, uh, and, and it, you know, I, 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 I must admit, I do approach it with caution. It sees me and an eye opens or, or, or it will come to me. It comes to me and the towel goes around your leg as it stands there. And it goes like that, you know, like that with its face against your leg. And it allows you to stroke it and all that. If it's asleep, then sometimes I go, all right, Ralph. And I just, just go and gently touch the back of its neck. And it's, it's, its head will come up. It will see me and then go back to sleep again. Uh, he had a workman round there. I was telling this the other night, actually. He had a workman round there some time ago now. And uh, the workman said, oh, isn't it a nice cat? And put his hand down. And well, it bit him. <laughs> Good. Blooming cheek. You go around touching people's pets like that all the time. It's outrageous. So that's that's Ralph the cat. He's also got two ginger cats. That's uh, Louis and Viton. 
literally, honestly, yeah, Louis and Vuitton. They're 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 friendly, but they don't. None of them like to be picked up. The boy cats do not like to be picked up. They're quite happy for you to stroke them on the ground. And when you drive into Ronnie's car park, they come to the car. As soon as they know who it is, they come to you. They all gather around to say hello. Isn't it lovely? They're such friendly cats. Now, the girl cat is Lauren. She's a little, um, oh, what's it called now? You know, like a, a mix of, uh, a tabby. She's a tabby. She's the friendliest of a lot. She wants to be picked up. She wants to be cuddled. She wants to jump on your lap. Oh, she's lovely, she is. And I'm uh, going up there and feeding them at the moment. I have to go up. After I finish the show today, I'll have some dinner. <clears throat> and then I'll drive up to his house and do the nighttime feed. Because I'm doing that twice. Twice a day at the moment. So I did that this morning. Uh, just after I'd been swimming. Not many people in the pool today. Uh, then I popped up to the train station. Managed to get a load of metros. You know, to put down in the kitchen. Oh, let's say hello to some more people there. Hello, Chris Harris joins us today. Hello, Chris. Hope you're well. Adam the Plumber's there as well. Adam lost. Adam's on the Slimmers World. He lost two and a half, another two and a half pounds yesterday. <laughs> Congratulations, Adam. You weren't with us at the beginning. Adam, I don't know if you like chilli. Here's something highly recommended. Heinz chilli beans. Only two sins in that can. Two sins in the Heinz chili beans, okay? Veg, veg chili beans. There's no meat in that. Suitable for vegetarians like myself. Okay, so put that on a jacket potato with no butter. And uh, that's a lovely meal, that is. And if you big jacket potato, you won't need anything else to eat, to be honest. You really won't. All right, Adam, so welcome to the show. And greetings to uh, Shania, who's a little bit late today, aren't you, Shania? Beautiful pictures I saw, Shania. Of the, was it the carnival I was looking at earlier? Lovely pictures you put up there. Wonderful. Chris is uh, about to, to go to bed. Well, take me to bed with you, Chris. I, I can serenade you to sleep. A lot of people watch this program who have got insomnia. And it helps. It's better than any, any tablet at all that the doctor, Tremegalon or whatever it's called, any of those sleeping tablets, you don't need them. Just put on this show next to your bedside, on the bedside cabinet, and that'll, that'll be fine. And that will help you drift off to sleep in a matter of seconds, usually. People have fallen asleep by then. All right? <laughs> So I got that. Uh, then I went down to Waitrose. I did go to Waitrose yesterday, uh, but I'd forgotten my tea bags. I'm, I'm really particular about my tea. In fact, we're going to do a recorded video soon. <clears throat> I've got a little bit of a recorded video coming up for you shortly of, of something new in Bracknell. Oh, it's very, it's the talk of the town today. It's been very, very busy in Bracknell today. I've never seen so many people wandering around on the Thursday afternoon as there was in Bracknell today. That's coming up shortly. Don't go away. Stay tuned on this channel. No need to go and watch old Hugh Edwards doing the news at 10 o'clock. Oh, he's so miserable, isn't he? Why don't he smile? Actually, I quite like Hugh Edwards as a newsreader. So I went to Waitrose, uh, got my tea bags. I'm very particular about my tea bags. At the moment, I'm on the Waitrose Gold Blend tea bags. 240 tea bags for about £5.40. I know! You're shocked at that price, aren't you? But it's better than any other tea. There's one place I work that will remain nameless, will remain nameless, which is a bit difficult to play, really, because I only work in three places, don't I? Um, I will reveal the name. Uh, the King's Head Theatre Bar. Oh, hang on, we got that call. That might be... Um, let's see who that is now. Hello, who's on line one? <clears throat> It's Heidi. I can't wait anymore. Hello, wait. Heidi. No, I don't think Emily's going to call in. I think she's pulling our leg. You know that. I think she's pulling our leg, Heidi. I do. I don't like it when people pull my leg. <laughs> oh, I do. It depends what they look like at the other end. Let me just finish about oh, the tea bags. So I bought these tea bags. £5.40 for 240 Is that dear, Heidi? It depends where you're getting from. Does it? Can you turn me off? I'm in, on in the background. It's a bit loud, darling. I can hear myself coming oh. back at me ten seconds later. <clears throat> Have you done it yet? Chop, chop, dear. Come on, chop, chop. Is that Very it? Good, love. Lovely. Thank you, Heidi. Yes, it's probably quite expensive to buy for tea bags, but uh, I quite like those ones. So I did that. Then I got my newspapers, because uh, Waitrose do a newspaper as well, but you can't take too many of them. So I took a few copies of that, shoved them in my bag and out. And uh, then I was walking out to Waitrose, and then we've got something new in Bracknell, Heidi, but I can't show that yet until I finish with you on the phone. So chat away, dear. Greetings, Heidi. Greetings. How are you? 
All right, darling. Good. Um, yeah, on antibiotics, I tend to um, just take what I need and then I don't flush the whole lot because more often than not, I'll have, I'll have the same thing again like later on. Right. So I've got some. I'm so you... Got... Oh, you keep them, do you, for another time? Yeah. Yeah, but how do you know those what... those antibiotics you've saved are for the next thing that you get goes wrong, if you see what I mean? Because... Because not all an... antibiotics are not all the same, are they? Don't they target certain things? Well, yeah, but, you see, the antibiotics, they've got a shelf life, so if you get them, I think they're within two years, you're fine. If you're over two years, throw them away. But I, because I usually, I know the symptoms of what I get. See, so yeah, I get toothache, so I get urethritis for toothache. Oh, right, okay. And uh, I get, what else do I get? I get, um, um, what is it? I get hay fever, so I'll get um, hay fever, um, the same hay fever tablets. So you get what, darling? Hay fever. Hay so seas? Hay What's that? Hay fever, darling. Hay fever. You know, hay seas. Oh, hay fever. I beg your pardon. Sorry, it's my ears. <laughs> Sorry, darling. Hay fever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll get the um, get them. Do you know then... that's a point? Since the doctor gave me my um, these um. Antihistamine. I don't know why he gave me a prescription for antihistamines. You can buy the blooming things for about 30 pence now. But he gave me those. I haven't sneezed in this studio since I've been taking those. Isn't that interesting? Some of them work, some <clears throat> of them don't. Mm. I I swear by the um, boots. Um, oh, yes, there's different types, the isn't there? Yes. Yes, and some make you drowsy yeah. and some make you not so drowsy as well, don't they? Yeah, well, these don't. This right. is brilliant. You get you get thirty in the pack, and you take one day yeah. and a stab. Is that Absolutely right? Okay. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. Did you do you have a garden where you are, Heidi? No, because I'm four floors up, darling. Well, have you got? got um, do, do you have plants in the house or anything like that? No, we've got plants outside. You got what, love? We've got plants outside. Oh, well, you got a balcony. Think, well, no, not so much balcony, but a, like a little red thing. I'll have to take some pictures and send you... Please do, yeah, send them across. Let's have a look at those at some point, Heidi. Yeah, I'll have to send them to you because uh, it looks quite nice up to you, especially at night. Right. When we had um, when we lived in Roehampton, we lived in like a... It was a masonette, one on top of the other. And we had a long balcony day. I worked long red buildings. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm, I'm... I've got a bit of a twitch today. My eye is, is feels like it needs to keep being pulled down. Do you know what I mean? And my nostril as well yeah, keeps sticking but, to the side of my nose. Oh, dear, I'm going like that all the time. Anyway, um, we uh, along uh, along our balcony, we had all little plants out there. I used to do tomato plants, Heidi. I used to grow tomato plants, and the whole balcony would be full of a line of tomato plants, which, uh, yeah, and I never used to like tomatoes. That's the funny thing about it. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? what? I'm going to tell you a story now. I kid you not. When I was young, I took about uh, seven to the age of ten. Yes. In our garden, the, um, the whole back gardens, no, no plants grew. In anybody's garden. Oh, isn't that strange? Oh, where was that then? Right. It was in Moonslow. Where? In Moonslow. 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 It's near. Um, Can you spell that, darling? W I L. Yeah. M S L O W. Moonslow. Wimslow. Okay, where is that then? I don't know that area. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Okay, you message you I'm going to spell it for you now. No, no, just um, tell me where near, it is. Where, where in the country is that then? It's near. Um, where is it near? Have you heard of Hanforth? Hanforth, no, no. What county is it in, dear? It's in. Um, oh. Yorkshire. You know where Alderley Edge is? Who? Alderley Edge. 
Alderney. Well, that's a, that's an island in Jersey, isn't it? Alderney. No, Alderney. That's it. That's it. Leeds got it. it it's near Crew. Near what? Look at your messages, Chris. No, I'm li- I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. That's why I'm not looking at the messages. You, t- yeah, we can't you have two conversations going at once, dear. One on messages and one while I'm talking. Make your mind up. What's it going to be? Look at. <clears> he's telling you where. Room, what I'm telling you. Well, just tell from. me where it is. Is it Yorkshire? It's is it Sutton? Is it Surrey? No, is it London? Near where? Crew. London. It's near Crew. Crew. That's in Nantwich in Cheshire. Yes. Right. Oh, well, we got there in the end. That was hard work, dear. Well, all you have to do is look at these messages. I'm not looking at messages while I'm talking to you. Do you want my full attention or do you want me to keep looking at messages? I've always got your full attention, dear. Well, get on with it, dear. (laughs) So nothing grew in these gardens, no? No, but when I had had the green fingers. You have green fingers? Everything I planted grew. Right. So, and I was a great. Um, you know how you know how you got to um, stay in the park about every five meters apart. Oh, it depends. Yes, with, sh- with shrubs you have to split them up. Funnily enough, I've got some uh, lilies. Uh, Ronnie's mum gave me some lilies a couple of years ago now. Actually, I put them in a pot and they grew more and more. So I split those up. They're now in three pots and there's masses of them. Masses of them mm. come up and now they've got to be split up again. Funnily enough, so um, the only thing is it, they're really big, heavy pots. So the only yeah. way to do it is literally to to roll the pot onto the grass, completely empty it out, and start picking out the lilies. And I'm, you know, I mean, I don't know how how often you have to change the earth in a pot. It's do you know what not, I mean? I mean, it, it, presumably at some point it just stops being uh, good for the plant. Does it? Do you not have to change the earth no. somehow? How do you do that? No. How do no. you do that then? No, no, you just no, you just leave it. Yeah, but at some point the nutrients must be all gone from the earth. That would be like no, us, you know. No. It, if we stopped eating, no. then we'd soon die. So at what point? No. I wonder. No, because what you're doing is when when you're watering the plant, the soil, the plant is getting the water from the soil. From, yeah, but what about the, actual... the nutrients? What about the nutrients, like food? It's like food. If well, I gave you water, you'd survive quite a long time. But without food, eventually you'd die. So it must be the same for plants. I suppose at some point you you do have to repot them. I wonder when you know how to do that. Perhaps when the plant starts growing, well, it, it, stops growing. It depends so well. on the plant. It Does depends it? on the plant. Some plants you have to repot every... I mean, when you buy a plant, yes. you don't necessarily have to pot it for the first right, year. Right, right. Depending on what what the plant is. I'm I with you. I should know this because I used to work on a plant store. Oh, did you really? Where was that? Yeah, in uh, Northern Road. Oh, OK. I know Northern Road, Mark, because I went to school round that way, didn't I, as you well know. Yeah. yeah. Are, you in, are you in Fulham now or Islington? I can never remember. I'm in Earl's Court, darling. Earl's Court. OK, so Fulham, Earl's Court. I'm with you down there. All right, my yeah. darling. Well, lovely to talk to you tonight, Heidi. Well, I hope someone else calls in now. Oh, it doesn't matter, darling. We've done nearly an hour now. Anyway, darling, it's nearly time for my dinner. So, I mean, uh, the line's still open, but if no one calls in, that's... I'm never never too worried. If people don't want to call in, that's fine. Most people don't want to call in. They don't want... They're just quite happy to sort of listen to them, uh, listen to me rab it on for some reason. Uh, but it was nice no. of you to call in tonight, Heidi. Always a pleasure, my darling. Have a lovely Thank evening, you. my dear. Sometimes I don't mind you rubbing it on, but sometimes I just re- I just call in just to break it up a bit. And thank you very much. You're probably doing a lot of people a favour. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Heidi. Bye bye, darling. Right. Bye. There we are. Very posh area of London, Earl's Court. I couldn't afford to live somewhere like that, my dear. Good God, no. Live in Earl's Court. Anyway, so now where did we get to? Let's just read a couple of your messages out. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Gavin is watching us on the 55-inch television. 50, that's five inches. It's all about the inches, Gavin. It's all about the inches. I wouldn't mind a larger... I've got a 50, which is it's actually quite old, my telly. I reckon it's about eight years old now. It's not a smart telly, but it's a plasma screen. I don't think they do... Do they not do plasma screens anymore at all, I don't think, do they? 
I don't think they do. But anyway, I've got a 50, 50 inch plasma. When I when I get another one, it'll be 65, maybe 70, because there's a lot of 65s. They've come right down in price. Years ago, they were like they, they started at like five grand. You're now getting them for about eight, seven, eight hundred pounds. You can get a 65 inch for. But I'm not I'm still not ready to go yet. There's nothing wrong with my telly. I tend not to change things unless something goes wrong with them. My mate, he, he has to have the next thing out straight away. So uh, I, I'm so glad you're watching me on a 55-inch telly. Oh, there must be certain types of films that look very, very good on that, don't they? Yes. Um, uh, Craig also. Hang on a minute. Craig. Hang on. Craig and Gavin. Oh, Craig, oh uh, it's Craig and Gavin, isn't it? So, oh, yeah. And you've sent me a little picture. Do we want to see Craig and Gavin who's watching me with their cat? <laughs> Uh, I can do that. Hang on a minute. I can show you Craig and Gavin if you want me to. Uh, desktop. Let's uh, do that. Now. 14. Is that going to work? Yes, it is, actually. I, that, I should be able to save that there. No, can't do it. Ah, oh, damn. No, hang on. Let's try again. Okay, save image. Uh, Craig. We could, do, we could do a whole show of, like, meet the viewer, couldn't we? Or something like that. Hang on a minute, boys. I'll get that picture up for you shortly. There it is, Craig. Right. It it's a it does take a little bit of a time to get a picture onto you. Usually, I've got all the stuff sorted out first. You see, when I when I bring in pictures and videos uh, onto the show, there we are. Put that there. Right, I should be able to show you that somehow now. Right, hang on a minute. Uh, studio. Change, what am I going to change? Dating, what's that? Dating, okay. Change that to... Oh, it's that picture of that footballer I've got, I showed you the other night. He's quite tasty, isn't he? Image, where are we now? Image, oh, see, it's a lot of mucking around to show you a picture that's just come in. There we go. All right, just a minute. Here we go. This is Craig. Um, there we are. Craig. Where are the boys now? Are you ready? Let's try this. Go. There they are. Oh, I can't see you properly. I don't know why. Maybe I can... Um... No, I can't go back to that now. Oh, I don't know. No, it, it does take a while to, to be able to do that. Can't get myself back on now. Oh, God. How does this work? Let's just click that. That worked. There we go. There we are. Sorry, I did try and show the picture there. They're watching me on a very, very large telly somewhere in the world. Very strange and mysterious. Uh, hello to Adam. He says, it's nice you've done a late night show. I'm laying here ill in bed. Are you ill again with that upset tummy? Have you been to the doctor about that? He's got a bad tummy at the moment, haven't you? Dear me. What happened to the 14-inch portable black and white TV? The one that used to be over there, Lee? How do you know about that? My 14-inch portable black and white TV. How do you know about that? I used to have that over there. How do you know about that, Lee? Hmm. Strange. Strange and mysterious. All right. Um, Ray says, I'm guessing you've got a new Marks and Spencers at the Lexicon Centre, giving out three glasses of Prosecco. Reading have got the Hexagon. Well, the uh, Marks and Spencers in... Uh, Wokingham has closed down for the Marks and Spencers in Bracknell. And here comes the video. Are you ready, boys and girls? Check this out. Look what we've got now in Bracknell. It's our brand new Marks and Spencers in Bracknell. How exciting. Look at them all streaming in there, hoping to get something for nothing. Tight old people they are. Uh, the rest of the shopping centre that we've got uh, in Bracknell is opening on the uh, 7th of November, which isn't too far away at all, is it? You see, it's all coming to Bracknell, boys and girls. And we've got a brand new shopping centre opening next month. No, not next month, in September. It's only about six weeks away. They've been doing that for a couple of years. And we've seen that build. We've seen the old centre knocked down completely flat and that build. And it's just marvellous. And I was again saying this the other night. I just, when you see the amount of people working on such a large building site, how on earth 
they all managed to work together, you know, doing their stuff. He's doing that. She's doing that. He's doing that. She's doing And everything comes together. How do they know how to fit everything together? I just think it's marvellous what they've done there. So it's very, very exciting. And you should have seen them, honestly. All going up to the new... Mar oh, it's so exciting. We've got a new Marks and Spencers. They're queuing up to get in there. It's only a bloody shop, for Christ's sake. It's a shop. You would think they were giving something away. I bet that's what they thought. You know what people are like? Something free. Oh, we can't wait to go down there for something free. Ghastly, honestly, dear. I shall leave it a couple of days before I go and have a nose around up there. They do quite nice bedding up there, don't they, in um, in um, uh, in Marcus Spencer's. Uh, Lee says, I've never used antibiotics. Uh, they are... Never use antibiotics that are not prescribed for a particular illness. Yeah, that's what I was just saying to Heidi there. Antibiotics also have the ability to kill. I am an emergency nurse practitioner. Or an emergency nurse? Well, that's handy to know, Lee. Perhaps you could just uh, give us your phone number, just in case I need you to come round and, and look after me, to, to tend to my poor needs. Yes, something like that. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, so I went down to uh, Waitrose, as I say. From there, I went to do my car service. Took my car into Toyota and um, Suzanne was there. Now, Suzanne, she's like the meet and greet lady in Toyota. And she's lovely. She's ever so thin. She's a vegan. I think she's vegan. Or is she vegetarian like me? No, I think she might be vegan. Never never looks never looks like she's put on an ounce of weight. And she comes over. Hello, Chris, how are you? Should I make you a cup of tea in a minute? Now, they've got a tea machine in there. But she likes to make it from the kettle because she's like me. She knows the tea that you get out of most of these blasted machines. The water's not boiling. So you don't get a decent cup of tea. It's always tastes it got a funny, scummy taste to it. Teas from most machines is just awful. So she made us a cup of tea. She says, um, I said, there was no one at the desk. She says, oh, look, we got we got a check in now. And she took me over to this machine. Oh, hello, Peter. Welcome to the show. Uh, took me over to this machine. And you enter your reg number and you put the keys in. Right, right. So usually this is what happens. Get out of my car. Walk past Suzanne. Hello, Suzanne. Walk to the desk. Someone takes the keys and that's it. Right. Thank you, Mr. Reardon. Sit down there. We'll be with you in an hour or so. Right. Now... Now, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? There was no one at the desk. So she said, oh, you can do this now. So we went round to this machine, which is next to the check-in desk. Started pushing things, push, put, put me uh, registration number in, my name and all that business. And then you put the keys in an envelope and put them in a little hole. And a man who usually sits behind the desk, collects the keys from the other side of the hole. And <laughs> what's all that about? Come on. Why have they wasted money doing that? All right, I suppose it's for when people aren't at the desk. But you understand what I mean. Why couldn't someone just come to the desk? The whole world has gone mad. Mad, dear. I don't get it. Anyway, so that happened there, and my car went in. I've had a little bit of a problem. The, the car has its own sat-nav, but I've I've had not good experience, really, with Toyota sat-navs. Don't get me wrong, they work. They will get you from A to B, but the traffic thing on it is just a complete mystery to me how it works. Now, I, use, I, I used to use TomTom Tom on my mobile phone, which is a, a cost. Not expensive, it's a cost. I now use Waze, W-A-Z-E, which is a completely free sat-nav. Now and again, you get adverts on it, so it's obviously paid for by adverts. It's an excellent service, and it's got traffic on it. It will automatically reroute re you around traffic, if it possibly can. And, and it's fantastic. The Toyota one just doesn't seem to do that. Um... He's done something to it. Apparently, I, I had a tick that wasn't in a box on the menu on the screen or something like that. Uh, and it, it, uh, uh, that tick wasn't in there. So he's done that. So the traffic bar on the side now comes up. But I, I can't work out how it works. So I'll give it another go tomorrow. I'll have ways on when I go into Central Station. We've got karaoke tomorrow. If you ever want to join us for the karaoke, come along to Central Station. On a Monday from 8 o'clock with cheap drinks or on a Friday from 8.30. Or come along to the Camden Eye in Camden Town. That's Sundays, 8 till 10.45 on a Sunday. That's a great night. Oh, they've got a wicked sound system in there. 
Really good sound system at the Camden Eye, OK? If you want to come in there and sing us a song or two. Um, so I'll use both tomorrow night and I'll see how that works. All right. And I'll let you know. So so that was it. Really. The car, car salesman came out. Uh, the bloke who sold me the car about six or seven months ago. I think it was last September, I think, I bought this particular car. Uh, well, I don't buy it. I've got it on that P... Is it PCP? PEP? PEP, is it? I can't remember what it was. Well, you pay so much a month, you know, and that's that's how it works. So I don't actually own the car. Anyway, the salesman always comes out and says, how's it going? I said, all right. Man. And he's so proud. He's a young lad, uh, spends most of his time in it. He's, he's like this. The muscles are like this. Like this, and he was telling me that him and his lady, they're having a baby. So he's ever so excited, and he's got all the pram, and he was telling us all about that. And then he said to me, where is your partner today? I said, what do you mean by my partner? He said, oh, the bloke that came in with you last time. Well, I don't remember mentioning that I was gay. I mean, surely I'm straight acting. You wouldn't know I was gay unless I told you, would you? For God's sake, man. I couldn't believe it. I, I beg your pardon. He said, you know, the fella you usually call. I said, that's not my partner. He said, oh, it looks like it is. I said, well, it certainly isn't. It was about 28 years ago for about a year. Never again. God's sake. Besides, he's only 10 years younger than me. Far too old for me. Someone like that. How can you go out with someone your own age, please? That's just embarrassing. You know, I'm looking for someone sort of between the ages of 30 and 42. That's what I'm looking for. Any offers today? Hello? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> my, my mate is 44. Far too old for me, dear. Far too old. <laughs> but I thought I didn't know I was out of the closet going to Toyota. I mean, I try and keep myself for myself, you know. Just because I've got a funny walk doesn't mean that I might be one of that lot. God's sake, man. <laughs> He just came out with that lug. Oh, he's a, such a nice bloke. He really is. And, um, of course, he is a salesman, and I know that. Um, he's either a really, really good salesman, uh, but then again, why would he come out and talk to me while I'm there? He sold the car, and he always comes out, and we have a bit of a chat about lives and all that. I, I, last time I saw him was just after Christmas, and he put on weight. I said, oh, what happened, mate? He said, oh, I stopped going to the gym, and I ate a load at Christmas. But he's lost it all again. He's, he's got one of those. He's got the V. He's got the big, wide arms and the little waist. Mind you, I'll be like that soon. Don't you worry about that. I think I'll be like that. So it's nice to have a little bit of a chat. And it's also nice that um, in this day and age, people can say that, and it's just a normal thing. You know, years ago, years and years ago, you know, you'd be beaten up or something like that, wouldn't you? But it doesn't, no, it rarely happens now, does it? It rarely happens there. So um, that was that. Uh, came back from there, had a sleep, and here I am talking to you. So that was my day. So thank you very much, boys and girls. Uh, Gustav, you're very late. I'm just about to finish. I'm sorry, dear. I'm going to have my dinner now, then I've got to go and feed my mates cats. <laughs> okay. Uh, Peter says Google Maps is very good as well. Oh, is it? I, Google Maps, I don't think I've used Google Maps. Um, does that have an automatic traffic um, reroute? I do have Google Maps on here. I, I, I don't think I've ever used it. Does that have an automatic traffic thing on it? I'd be interested to know. Perhaps you could let me know that. I might try that one as well. I, I just wonder what the best sat nav is. I'm kind of quite pleased with Waze. At the, Waze, which is the one I use at the moment. Oh, thank you, Peter. So it does have an automatic traffic update, does it? Okay. Uh, Waze. TomTom, <clears throat> Tom -tom, which is the one I've used for a long time, tends to get you to stick to the main routes. Okay, you don't really go down many side roads. Waze will take you down a lot of side roads, which is actually quite nice. You know, you do. I'd rather go a long way round down little side roads than sitting in a bloody queue of traffic for hours on end. You know, and Waze takes you off the main road and it'll go down little side roads. You know, oh, it's a nice little shop there or people over there and things that you haven't seen before, which makes the journey also much more interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. So there we are. Ah, oh, Heidi uses Google Maps as well, so it does do traffic. So thank you very much for that. All right, well, do uh, today's birthdays, boys and girls, and then uh, we're going to disappear. Okay, so I can have my dinner. Oh, hang on a minute. What have I done there? Done something wrong there. All right. Uh, birthdays. And I hope to be back with you 
I'm hoping to be back with you for a show tomorrow morning. Well, I can't promise that because I'm a little bit sh short of time now with um, looking after Ronnie's cats and all that at the moment. It's take a little bit. To, I mean, it's, when I say it takes a bit of time, it's like half an hour. But half an hour out of my day when I'm busy all the time. Oh, I was going to show you my, my new shirts and trainers have arrived. Do you want to sit? No, I'll leave it till tomorrow. I'll leave it till tomorrow because we're running out of time. We're running out of time now. I'll show my new trainers and my new shirts have arrived. All on sale. Ralph Lauren and Ted Baker, all sale items. I'll wear one of my new shirts tomorrow. There you go. Pointless wearing the trainers. You can't see my feet. Maybe I should have another camera at foot level or something like that, should I? Might be an idea. Uh, today's birthday's then. It's Mary, the lovely Irish Mary. Mary Warren, it's her birthday today. She's in Argentina at the moment. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Happy birthday to Mary in Argentina. She had a lovely birthday dinner today as well. So happy birthday to you, Mary. All right. Uh, happy birthday today to Warren Reeves. Hello, Warren. Warren is top man on British Airways. And he's a great supporter of the show. He really is. He thinks I should be on LBC. He knows a lot of people in LBC. Uh, but I, I, And I've always told him, no, I'm not LBC material. And indeed, a person at LBC also told, told him that I wasn't LBC. So I know that. But I knew that anyway. But Warren, thank you for supporting me. I, I do appreciate that very much. Happy birthday, Warren. Uh, Peter Proud Mary Andrew is 33 years old today. Happy birthday, Peter. Steve Legg. Now, Steve... I'm not sure who you are, Steve. Did I work with you at British Te Telecom? Were you known as Leggy? I'm not sure if it is you or not. If not, which Steve are you? Because I, I can't remember you, Steve. Or maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe I don't know you. Maybe I've got it wrong. Uh, but I can't remember. I've got a feeling I might have worked at British Telecom with you l l years ago. So happy birthday to you, Steve. Happy birthday to the lovely Ryan Harvey, who I worked with at the Black Horse in the East End of London, that was about 15 to 20 years ago, wasn't it, Ryan? Gosh, so long ago. Uh, Thomas, Thomas Kozinski. Happy birthday, Thomas. Looking good, Thomas. Quite like the beard going on there. I have tried it myself before, but I start getting very itchy. I can't be doing with that. And uh, a happy young birthday today to David Young, who is just a very young 29 years old today. So happy birthday to you all. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Mary, Warren, Peter, Steve, Ryan and Thomas and David, happy birthday to you. Hey, I've got all the names in, check that out. Very rapid speaking going on tonight, thank you. All right, uh, that's it for the show today, boys and girls. Uh, Peter says, if there's an accident, that Waze will tell you as well. Oh, that's excellent, really. Yeah, the, 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 the Waze does that. And the Google Maps you're saying as well. Uh, Heidi uses Google Maps all the time. So it might be worth trying that one as well, I think. Anyway, uh, I'll disappear then now, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us for the show today. As I say, hope to be with you tomorrow morning, uh, sort of around 10-ish. 9, 10, 11 ish, something like that, uh, if we've got the time to do that, okay? Apart from that, uh, have a nice Thursday evening, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye now. <laughs>